A good evening, this is Tenez the Human, and welcome to this, a special Games Guide edition of Medieval 2 Total War, where today we're going to have a look at how you can unlock the Rebels in Custom Battle. Now, of course, they're not the only faction that you can't play as here. There are also the Saxons and the Normans. So I'm going to show you how you can unlock all three of these to play. Now, of course, it's just going to take a small tweak in the game files. And before we start, of course, do back up any files that we're going to change here, because it can be an awful pain to fix those later. Now, once we've got these unlocked, of course, that gives us access to these different factions and they will have some interesting units that you maybe don't see all that often. And might well be fun to play around with. Certainly, the Rebels have plenty of rarely seen units to sink our teeth into. So let's head into the files. As with any Medieval 2 modding guide, we do, of course, need to unpack the files first and make sure by using the preference file here, that any changes we make stick. I do have a video guide on that down in a link below. But once you've got them all unlocked, we need to head inside the data subfolder. And from there, we're gonna scroll down to Deska SM Factions. Once inside there, we'll be able to make all the changes we need. Once inside the file then, the main line we need to focus on is this one here, Custom Battle Availability, which of course for likes of England is currently stated as yes. And indeed, that is the case for almost all the factions in here, apart from, of course, the three that we're looking at here today. So the slaves, or the rebels, as we well know them, are currently at no, but I've just changed them to yes. And you might think it's as simple as that. It almost is. The main problem we have, however, is that on the custom battle screen, there's only space for 21 faction symbols. And of course, these three are 22, 23 and 24, which means we're going to have to change a few to no in order to fit them in. If you just change your answer yes, it's not going to work. So let's just go and change a few others just to make sure that we show this off. So here are the Timurids. They have a few extra lines and here you might notice mainly just to do with their hordes. If you're interested in other things like the culture and religion, I have separate guides on that. I'll link that in the description below as well. But for now, we'll just focus on this. So we'll just select the Mongols, the Timurids, and the Aztecs to be not available anymore. That's now freed up three spots. We're going to save that up, and we're going to load the game. Before we head back into the game, though, there is one more thing I want to show you, and that is that there are a few units that currently aren't accessible in Custom Battle. So we're just going to make sure we unlock those. I mentioned this a little bit in my cut content video, but if you head down in the data file a bit further, We'll eventually get to this file here, the export desk unit. If you head straight down to the bottom of the file, then you'll find a Norman catapult, which is currently not available in custom battle. You can see that from the attribute here, no custom. If we simply remove that, it will now be fully available. The other thing we might want to do though, is head a bit further up. So I'm gonna use control F to find myself the next Norman unit, which is Rufus. Marvelous, we can make him available. Good old general bodyguard. I uh, can't recall off the top of my head that these guys are dismounted, but we will find out when we get into battle very, very soon. If you want to, you can flick through, you can see the other units they have. We're going to see them all in a moment once we load up the game. But of course, if you want to go and add any more units onto the list here, then I do have a separate video on adding any new units into different factions. It is mainly based around Rome Total War, however, it does work for Medieval 2 as well, albeit with a slight um, Silver Surfer glitch that you may have seen in my Papal States campaign. But um, hey ho, essentially it does work and you can get any unit you want into your faction without too much faffing around. But without any further ado, we better head back into the game and see these guys in action. Here we are then on the custom battle screen and we can see now we've got ourselves the Normans, the Saxons and the Rebels. Interestingly, the Rebels are the only ones with a description there. You might of course notice that the Normans have the same emblem here as England. Of course, the three lions, I think technically three leopards actually, the Normans were the people who conquered England. So that of course makes sense. Now, if we want to go and head in and look at these guys in a bit more detail, we'll obviously need to select them here. We can see then we've got ourselves Duke William and Rufus. They do seem to be dismounted bodyguards, which is marvellous. Mailed knights, mounted sergeants. Okay, we've got plenty of them available here. It's a bit on the basic side, but of course they are supposed to be from pre-game times. Now we can head over. Yeah, you can see um, the Saxons are very basic indeed. 
you might want to go and unlock a few more units for them perhaps give them some cavalry but there you are you can see the sort of basic set of troops that are available to them and the rebels well the rebels are a different beast altogether of course they have themselves a huge selection of units something you don't see too often like the croat axemen although there are a few at the very start of the game in zagreb and yeah just a whole beautiful list of nonsense we saw quite a lot of these in the rebel campaign i don't think there are many we missed out on although of course there are a few like the hussars uh, oh the hussites sorry that i covered last time in the cut content video and those particular guys i don't think i saw but you can now get them in the custom battle if that's what you want to do the most important thing of course is you've got all the fun religious units that you might well want they can get all of the nice late mercenary chaps and yeah most importantly they get cannons and elephant cannons at that yes the rebels do have themselves a very nice broad army here so you have a lot of fun with these guys in custom battle i think that's what we'll do now straight into battle then you can see a huge bombard splat over here on those chaps lovely shots on them yes as we head in of course we are in the andalusian hills it's only fitting i think for a yeah, all these Anglo-Saxons and Normans and Proto-English types that turn up in the south of Spain. So um, we're going to come and invade this territory because that's what we do. So let's introduce you to my army here. There is a second rebel army you might have seen in the distance. That was almost uh, elephants running amok. That might well happen very soon. Yes, we've got the Lithuanian archers here. The uh, yeah, good old veterans of our rebel campaign. They were beautiful in our eastern campaigns early on they got the lithuanian cavalry are back here as well who were alongside with them still ooh, not quite gonna mock yet let's just send them charging in because that's what elephants are here for yes we've also got ourselves some welsh longbowmen and of course the hussites who are currently on fire but aside from that doing a beautiful bit of work now we do have the transylvanian peasants in case you don't know these guys very well by the way um, I think they're a late game unit, but uh, yeah, they've got themselves some beautiful halberd style axes. Are they even halberds? They're certainly big pointed axes anyway. Five attack, effective against armour, so um, yeah, halves the armour stat of the enemy. Very, very effective indeed, along with the, um, well, I don't know how to pronounce this, so the Gallo Glach is what I normally go for, but I really don't know. Um, but otherwise, I've got a load of cavalry back here. Oh, there we are, <laughs> the elephants running amok thought that might happen um have we missed most of the elephant fun we might have missed a bit of the elephant fun let's just head inwards for this so yes of course we've got a we should probably look at the non-rebel forces at this point good shot my sir good shot and that sent that sent them flying as well which possibly wasn't good from their point of view let's not pause it anyway a lot of these units you know we um we see them when it comes to uh working with uh what are they called yeah the english yeah basically a lot of these are very similar to the English units. However, over here we can see the Saxons. The Saxons are slightly more interesting. They have the Thanes over here, which I think um, these should be on Thrones of Britannia, aren't they? Thanes are definitely in there as well. See so the Polish nobles <laughs> chasing them down. Make short work of them. Someone's dead. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the enemy general. Okay. Yeah, um, that, that was easily done there. The Polish nobles, I think I had... I think I think probably the first episode of the Rebel Campaign saw the Polish nobles make crucial, crucial victories for us. But yes, of course, they are the Viking sorts, the uh, Anglo-Saxons, or the Saxons, as it says here. Um, so the uh, the general, the Earl's Huskels, are, of course, well, a Huskel unit. So we better go send in some of our infantry to go and do the job on them. We'll send some of the Irishy, Scottishy lads, and a few of the Transylvanian peasants to come along with them. They look like a bit of fun. Now, are we just in time for the monster revolt? We might be, you know. Yeah. Oh, no. That was just overhead. You guys get back on control. We should be firing these shots. I think we've missed the monster revolt, ladies and gentlemen. That's a bit of a shame. We'll see what we can do about that. As I say, this um, isn't a very fair fight at all. But um, <laughs> shooting themselves. Okay, we do have some nice cavalry back here. We better get those in here. We've got the Grandine Ginete and the Ginete who I absolutely love. As you might know, Portugal are my favourite faction on this particular game. So uh, I do like the Ginete, the like Javelin Cab are absolutely beautiful. And I do have Albanian and Serbians over here on this flank. Some very nice Cav unit, which 
I've quite rarely seen, I suspect the Albanian champs only really appear around Durazo, um, which is one of those cities which isn't even in the files, hence it's so small, very strange indeed. But they're pretty solid, in case you don't know these chaps here. They've got themselves good morale, good stamina, the Serbian Hossars, 13, 15, and the Albanian lads, 11, 10. But these lads are fast moving as well, so, um, and also great hats. So I noticed this when I went to Albania a few years ago, there were some really interesting hats in their museum. Um, anyway, I like a good hat, what can I say? Now, uh, I don't, aside from the Thanes and the, uh, and the general Earl chaps, I suppose there's nothing too distinctly unique and in overly interesting about uh, a lot of the Saxon or Norman troops. A lot of them are things you may well have seen before, but nonetheless, I think they're interesting all the same. Have a bit of fun playing with them. You're probably best off um, playing against early armies, to be honest, because, of course, they are based just before the start of the game, and I am using quite a lot of late units here. Now, uh, you can see my allies are coming in. They're mostly, to be honest... They are mostly um, a big bunch of the religious units. There are some pikemen here. I was going to show off the pikemen working because, of course, yes, I've got that video on fixing the pikemen, um, where I constantly mispronounce the uh, Lange Connect, which apparently sounds... What do they say it sounds like? Sounds like a snail or something like that. Nonetheless, um, I will endeavour to not mispronounce Lange Connect quite as much as I currently do. But... Um, Anyway, we can only dream, I suppose. This has been a bit one-sided. I'll be honest, I'm very biased towards the rebels, um, even if I am facing Anglo-Saxons and the Normans, who I should normally support. But um, they are running away. Um, but I'll let you. I'll let you enjoy all these units for yourself. There's plenty of beautiful things here. I didn't see all of them in my rebels campaign, of course. If I took over the re well, I took over the map so quickly. Um, spoiler alert, but yes, I took over so quickly that many of the regions never had a chance to spawn their beautiful, beautiful troops. But here we are. Here are the, yeah, here are the religious fanatics. So oh, beautiful. We've got the Islamic and Christian men running alongside. This is what the rebels do, ladies and gents. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Um, this is the, yes, unlocking the rebels, the Saxons and Normans in custom battle, as well as these beautiful, beautiful pikemen, of course. Anyway, I'll leave a little links in the description below to some of the other guides, but I will let you enjoy this for yourself. For now, I will leave you. I'm Thomas, this is Tenez the Human, and this has been Unlocking the Rebels, Saxons and Normans in Custom Battle. Thank you, and bye-bye. Today we're going to go for particularly aggressive diplomacy. Oh, oh yes, it worked. Kablamo! <laughs> you are always going to die, Steve. Oh, my feudal knights! My crispy, crispy feudal knights. The ram's burning. <laughs> right at the death. <laughs>